नमस्ते माई टॉपिक एस इंडिया इज माई रिलीजियन सो वाई डू कॉल दैट आई कम टू इट आई बिलीव इंडिया इज ए नेशन एज वेल एज ए नोशन इंडिया इज एन आइडिया वॉट काइंड ऑफ आइडिया इज दैट इंडिया एस वी ऑल नो इज ए जोग्राफिकल स्पेस वी ऑल नो इट्स अ लैंड मार्स इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम आसे टू हिमाचल फ्रॉम ऑलमोस्ट काश्मीर टू कन्याकुमारी एस वी नो वॉट इज द आइडिया ऑफ इंडिया और वॉट इज द नोशन there is a nation called india what is the notion of india that's what i'm trying to explain <coughs> before saying that right now we are in ted tedx srm ted is always saying about ideas worth spreading what is the power of an idea how much powerful is an idea let me see we have always taught in our history that british ruled us for almost 200 years say 190 plus years from battle of plassey to almost 1947 they say they ruled us we have learned in our history books they ruled us brutally they looted our wealth they they might have made some things but they, for their own convenience they ruled us for 200 years in many of our places in history it is rumored and it said they wrote indians and dogs are not allowed that means indians were considered like that they are never wrote hindu muslim or christian they said indians and dogs are not allowed have you ever thought how many british soldiers were there in india when they ruled us how many british soldiers how many soldiers of the queen were there when they ruled india and what what was the population of india then by around 1910 say let us take 100 years back at that time there was no pakistan and bangladesh there was agand bharat united india and our population was around say 20 crores there were around roughly 2 lakh 20 th- thousand british soldiers Let's say we can say 2 uh, 2 lakh british soldiers so with 2 lakh british soldiers they ruled a nation of 20 crores in that proportion for 200 years why because the idea of india was not powerful when there was an idea of india and that that idea came prominent what we did was we could strike them back and you know i asked for this cup of water because for the simple reason can you spot britain in this or can you spot united kingdom in this it's a pinkish thing on the top if you can see they usually don't write united kingdom on top of britain for a particular reason because if it's write at united kingdom on the top of it britain will be invisible that much small a nation it is i'm not de- degrading it it's a great nation it has its own culture but you know if you have writing united kingdom on top of britain britain cannot be seen on a world map it's such a small country if indians you know i was asked to give a glass of water you know they gave me this if we could have taken a glass of water and poured it over britain britain would have drowned in atlantic ocean without ever coming back again that much smaller a nation it was but what we had the problem we never had the idea we never had the power we never had the idea of india and when the idea of india came whoever it is whatever we uh, you know there might be there there might be having their own negative coming short comings but when we when we uh, when we had our own uh, unity when we had our own idea of india whoever it be maybe be mahatma gandhi savarkar guruji um, uh, or um, say subhash chandra bose bhagat singh or whoever it is we stroke back and right now one of the happiest incident in the past two months i had one was my marriage and second was this i don't know how many of you have seen this an indian brought east india company which ruled us for 200 years so the empire can strike back that's a very positive thing i believe uh, we are having so right now the idea is very important the notion of india and indianness is very important i was working for a corporate for many years working in a us company and uh, some other companies too but majorly working in a us companies the whole idea of india the whole notion of india came into me almost some years ago uh, when uh, i was traveling abroad before that many of us uh, you know i always believe in universal brotherhood i believe in internationalism i was a superstitious internationalist until i realized even internationalism is an indian idea i was blindly into internationalism until the moment i realized even internationalism is an indian idea we call it was deva kudumbagam and make no mistake in the name of universal brotherhood in the name of universalism and humanism obama is never going to let off his guard otherwise he, they would have never banned the whole one state in ohio outsourcing jobs to india there are many nations see they all believe in universal brotherhood but they know how to take care of their interest as a nation as a particular piece of land they are very well versed how to take care of their interest we indians many a time become so superstitious about internationalism that we forget our nation and forget to mention about national heritage and treasure and this whole thing about falling in love with india almost happened 4 years 4 to 5 years ago as working in this us company i went to indonesia indonesia you know you might be knowing the largest muslim country in the world where 23 crore muslim brethren are there 90 per, 90 plus percentage of indonesia's muslims and uh, and i went there <coughs> uh, i had a guide there his name was ram mohammed i said what ram mohammed i've heard sita ram i had heard ram swami i had heard ram lakhan so many rams but never ram mohammed so i thought it was an inter religious marriage kind of no he said no no we are proud muslims you are living here for centuries i said then how come ram mohammed 
He said, wait, sir, there are much more things to explore here. And uh, when I came down, he asked me to look at the flight we are traveling in. And this was the flight. I took the photo there. And the flight was called Geruda, Indonesia. I said, Jesus Christ, who is this Geruda? And they said, Geruda, don't you know you are coming from India? Geruda, I know, don't you know Geruda? I said, I know one Geruda, but who is this Geruda? That's the same Geruda of Ramayana. And how come it, it is here in the largest Muslim country? They said, Geruda, Indonesia is our national vehicle, just like we say Air India. This is the hotel we stayed. The hotel is called Hotel Ramayana. And uh, you know, there are many uh, stages or there are many places where scriptures of Rama Setu or so many other things are you know, painted and portrayed there. I was surprised. I asked them why. But the shock of my life came when you know, they uh, gave one note to the uh, taxi driver and I, I snatched the note and looked, who, who is that elephant? Uh, they said, you know, don't call it elephant, it is Ganesha. Uh, I said, okay, fine. And, and who is this Ganesha and how come Ganesha is there, especially with the sacred third in the largest Muslim nation in the world? It's a currency note in the largest Muslim nation in the world. They are 20,000 rupiah. That's called Ganesha. They said, see, sir, Ganesha is something like a lucky charm for us. No, it brings good luck. Like, we believe in that kind of a thing. And how come it is there? And for God's sake, after some time, I, you know, I crossed the bank, and the bank was called Bank Ganesha. I said, what? Bank Ganesha, I have never seen Bank Ganesha in India. I have never seen the iconography of Ganesha here. They say it is not like God, but it is something like our culture. But the shock of my life came when I saw their Ramayana day celebration. When you know they very respectfully play Ramayana. Their Rama is a big icon there. You might not believe Rama is a big icon there. The Indonesian Muslim woman, you know, uh, they, they say, they call him Imam -e Hind or the leader of India. Imam -e Hind is the name is they call it. And they call it a very prominent cultural icon. You can see a lot of things. And when I see this, I asked him, who is that monkey? He said, come on, sir, don't speak like that. It's not monkey. It is called Hanuman. I said, what? It is Hanuman. And you know, uh, above it is uh, Geruda. But, this, uh, but another shock came, you know, I was uh, after shock and shock. The symbol of Indonesia is Geruda. The symbol of the nation next to Thailand is Geruda. The symbol of the capital of Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar, is Geruda. I am still surprised how our Geruda you know, flew to that much distance. But you know, they are Geruda. I said, see, I can't believe my eyes. We had a tour around Indonesia and Thailand. And, and he said, see, you know, there are many roads like Ram roads, election roads. And they said, one of our fondest memory of India is there is a serial by one person called Ramanan Sagar. Have you seen it? He, I said, yes, 1980s, you know, the Ramanan Sagar. It was a big hit here. We usually have the CDs of it. I, I, no, I, I, I said, I'm shocked beyond extent. And, you know, this is the national symbol. And I usually carry the note of Ganesha because otherwise people won't believe. Because here there are two kinds of extreme voices saying, one, you know, uh, they, uh, they say uh, Ram is a, uh, they, uh, they project Ram as if a divisive figure, the other person saying, see, we don't belong to this. It's basically a divisive figure here. But in, in the largest Muslim nation in the world, I can see people accepting, and I asked them, I got the shock of my life, in the sentence I asked one of the historians there, what is the basis for this? And he told me a very interesting thing. By religion, we are Muslims, we are, uh, you know, we belong to the proud Islam, but by culture, we are Indians. I said, what? What is that? See, by religion, we are Muslims. But by culture, we belong to the Indian cultural heritage. That was the influence. I, I, know I thought I will read more about Indian culture, Indian influence worldwide. And one of the nice things about India is when I come back to India, I'm sad to say, but you know, I don't want to bring divisive issues here. One person saying, uh, as if uh, Ramayana happened in Uttarakhand, Ramayana was, Ramayana and Ramayana were basically two village heads. They had a small stream in between, Hanuman and jumped over that, they had clashes. But if you go to Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan government offers this. Sri Lankan government offers Ramayana tourist package. And many in India still claims Ramayana and Ramayana were two local kings of Uttarakhand. See, this is how our history was falsified, our history was, you know, fabricated. And, you know, you might have all seen this news in many papers and channels. American President Barack Hussein Obama, born to a Muslim father and a Christian mother, he is having a Hanuman uh, look at his hand. He is having a small Hanuman shape. Only small difference is that Hanuman is having a Trishul and a Chakra there. You know, that's an Indonesian ritualization. So, uh, that's the reason, because uh, Barack Obama was born and brought up in Indonesia in a very young age. That's the reason. So, this is a culture, this is a civilization that has influenced a lot. And another thing, this is Thailand airport. And this Thailand airport, it is clearly written, the scene of churning of milk ocean, the scene depicts Vishnu Kurmavatar and the churning of milk ocean. This is Palali Mathana, or the churning of milk ocean. They don't even give, a, they also don't give it properly a religious connotation. But, you know, it's a cultural influence. This is a Shangha Chakra Gadapat Madhari Mahavishnu there. They say these are our legends, our iconographies, our history, our mythology. In the similar way, you can, you can see a lot of things in a lot of parts of the world. For example, Machu Picchu, one of the seven wonders of the world, is actually a temple dedicated to Surya or uh, Aditya or sun and moon. Or one shock I got was when a researcher called Gene D. Matlock, he sent me a, a detailed description and saying that there is a Mount Shasta in South America. 
I said, okay, so what's the big deal about that? There's a river Pamba flowing near to it. I said, okay, fine. The place's name is Uri Pamba. I said, okay, I, I was speaking to you. And the local uh, people, their Gotras have a deity called Aipa. But the, you know, strange thing is, we are not aware about our civilizational heritage beyond religion. You know, you can take India, you know, India can boast of the first Christian community ever happened in the world. The legend says that St. Thomas came back in almost AD 52 and we had the first Christian community. In Kerala, we have a place called uh, Cheraman Perimal Mosque in Kudungallur. And the history or legend has it, it is older than Mecca itself. Uh, this uh, chairman Perumal, who was, uh, you know, who then went uh, met Prophet Muhammad, who was in Medina, and uh, you know, he asked him for permission, and he almost constructed the second oldest Juma mosque. He converted one of his buildings into a mosque. He went and met Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the cultural heritage. This is the diversity we can always be proud of. And this is one book written by Jindi Madlock. If you are interested, you can check in that. And he says it's not me. It is not a nationalist agenda. Jindi Madlock, who is basically belonging to Spanish and American lineage. He says India once ruled America. So I have no idea. And he says uh, if you take the globe like this, Indians are divided the space into seven, uh, like Patala, uh, uh, Puar Loga, Pu Loga, many different demarcations. Well, Atala, Sutala, Pradala, Rasadala. And he says uh, I mean, if India is this, the other side of the world was called Patala. And Padala is strictly not the underworld, it's not the negative thing. Padala is the other side of the world, and that amounts to today South America. And you know, they have their own records. For example, one of the greatest cultures they had is the Mayan culture, the Maya culture. And who is Maya? Maya is Ravana's wife, Mandodri's father. So you know, you have a lot of connection, but sadly, we people are not interested in ourselves. We people are not interested in history. Gene D. Madlock contacted many publishers in India and wanted to publish a book. They said, we are not interested. This is the classic problem we are having. We are not proud about our culture or heritage. And I personally belong to the lineage of Shabirmala. I am the grandson of Shabirmala Tantri, Shabirmala Supreme Priest, where millions of Hindu devotees first go to a mosque. There we go to the Erimeli Palli and we go to a Vavar Swami Nada and then offer prayers to uh, Ayapa, Alangal, Swami Ayapa. So this is the cultural diversity. In many nations, you can always say the concept of tolerance. See, if you are a Hindu, tolerate a Christian. If you are a Christian, tolerate a Muslim. If you are a Muslim, tolerate a Hindu. This idea of tolerance has been dissolved in India and we have an idea of acceptance of all. Just we always say, Egam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vandandi. That the truth is one. The philosophers, the thinkers, the sages define this or interpret it in many ways. And we have accepted all as true. That's the only reason why we could imbibe so much differences. And you know, I have once had a meeting with an Israeli friend, and Israeli friend said, India is the only place in the past 2500 years where there is not even a single instance of anti Jew or anti Semitic tendency. So India's inclusivity, India's acceptance of all, that doesn't mean we never had our own share of problems. Of course, we had our own share of problems. We had some mistakes in between. We had some scars. Like Sri Ram earlier said, we had some problems. We had the problem of the Kashmiri Pandits. We had the problem from time immemorial. But I can challenge you, you go to, you go to Google and say Pakistan clashes. You go to Google and take America clashes. You go to Google and take China clashes. You will have a hundred more than India. Because India has always accepted, India always believed in diversity. And you know, I can show you umpteen number of things. I can show you umpteen number of historical and cultural examples we are having. I, am, I, I phrased it, India is my religion. I was working in a corporate. I was paid close to a million a year. But I thought, you know, I, I want to contribute to the national building. I want to contribute more to my nation. Because uh, in the era of internationalism, in the era of uninhibited individualism, or the era of, uh, say, so-called a false sense of internationalism. Internationalism is very good. We believe in universal brotherhood. But never think that should be at the cost of our own national interest. Our people, our youngsters should have an idea what, what India is. They should be uh, allowed to see what uh, India does, or they should be allowed to know what India is, our culture, our heritage. That's the reason why I thought of coining a very small poetry. I don't even call it a poetry, a small two lines for you. Those lines go like this. Me Hindu hu, me Hindu hu, Musalman bihu, Sikh, Isai, or a Kinsan bihu, me ek nahi, anek hu. Is miti ka ek kan hu, or sare Hindustan bihu. I am a Hindu, I am a Hindu, I am a Muslim too. Because by definition, uh, if you are going to a temple and you are called a Hindu, and if you are going to a mosque, you are called a Muslim, I go to a temple and mosque. Because whenever you go to Shabrimala, you have to pray. That's by custom, you have to pray there and go there. I am a Sikh, I am a Christian, I am a human being too. Because we never believe, just because one person is a Pakistani or China who are hostile neighbors, then they are bad. We, ne we never believe that. I am a Hindu, hu, Muslim, bhi hu. Sikh, Isai, Christian, or a Kinsan, bhi hu. May ek nahi anek hu. I am not one but many. I think that's a more relevant sentence than this is. We are all stuck up with one identity theory. That means we will only have one identity. 
we are, we are, we are having many identities. At one level, we belong to the cosmos, what Hinduism calls Tatomasi, what Islam calls Tawheed, the universal oneness of things. That means we are from bacteria to blue whale, we are one. You know, from the Paramanu to Paramatma, we belong to a single entity. But on the worldly level, we have different identities. I am a human, at the same time I am an Indian, you know, I, am, I might be a Carelite, I might be belong to a family, I might also belong to a residence association. So we are also having different identities and we have to do justice to all identities. That's one of the major things. And I request, you, I uh, urge you to do the duty, to do that uh, responsibility to your own nation to our nation, to our motherland India. In the era of globalization, the idea of nationalism, the idea of a nation is under attack. That idea will never get us anywhere. I'm a big fan of America. America might have a lot of good things, but always remember, America always plays the international card when it suits them, and they always place the national card when it suits them too. See, that's a very clever ploy of them. I'm not saying they are bad. They are the leaders of the current civilization. So when, when they want, uh, they can play, say, internationalism. And when they want, see, our jobs are getting lost. They switch back to nationalism. So always remember, we have our own priorities and we can't compromise our priorities. One of the priorities we have is this. This is India and India is right now under a stage of siege. It's under a stage of almost a war-like situation. We can see almost one by third of our district uh, affected with Naxalism. We are having our own share of Maoism. We are having problems in Kashmir. We are having problems from China. And one of the greatest prime ministers I really love and admire, Chacha Nehru, he was a great person. He was an internationalist. He was a cosmopolitan. But with all due respects, back in 1962, he was saying Indochina bye-bye. But that means India and China are brothers. But China never listened to it. Chinese never thought that we are boys. And they came. They snatched our 5,218 kilometers. That's still with China. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Gandhian, my father, my family was a Gandhian, Gandhiji visited our family when he came to Kerala long back. I'm an ardent follower of Gandhiji, but you might know our history. Gandhiji really wanted to give 55 crores to Pakistan after the partition. And Pakistan still has to give India 350 crores. Gandhiji, with all the best of intentions, uh, did this Satyagraha for releasing 55 crores to Pakistan. And 55 crores amount to almost 1 lakh crore now. And what did they do with that money? They attacked India. And Pakistan still have to give that 350 crores, it will amount to more than 4 to 5 lakh crores. See, we should never compromise on the national interest because nobody else does. Because we have a commitment to our own nation. And India, you know, you, you can see almost all the people from world over have uh, showered a lot of praise of India. But I believe the greatest Indianness, the greatest Indian trend is the inclusivity, the acceptance of all religions is true. That's the only reason why, as an earlier speaker said, he said, you know, he is repeating Gayatri Mandra and La Ilahi Illala, you know, uh, along in the together line itself. That only means we accept many people, we accept manyness of the concept of God, we accept different paths to the truth. And if there is a religion that can be called, that's the reason why Akbar earlier tried it, he wanted to join the essence of all. All the modern Indians say it, we, 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 respect the, we give the same reverence or respect to both Om, Rose and the Crescent. See, that's the Indianness. So I believe India is a religion, India is a nation, India is a notion that should survive. Because even if you want internationalism to survive, India has to survive. So I believe this Vasudeva Kudumbagam, this idea of India, this notion should survive. So I am ending with my favorite lines. May Hindu hu, Musalman bihu. Sikh, Isai or a Kinsan bihu. May ek nahi, anek hu. Is mitti ka ek kan hu or sare Hindustan bihu. Indian and Musalada, Talinamaran Nelada. Vandeya Matra. Oh, thank you.